the dollar's had a pretty decent run. It's a volatile week. We've got the Fed. Is that it now? Or do you think we'll see some more gains for the dollar after the Fed? I think we'll see some more gains for the dollar. I mean, it, obviously, it depends on the slant that the Fed take this week. There is some optimism out there about the U.S. economy. And, of course, that report last week uh, from the San Francisco Fed suggesting that the market might be behind the curve and anticipating Fed hikes. That's left the market anticipating a hawkish uh, taint for this commentary. If we don't get that, then, yes, the dollar could dip back. But I do think that if we're looking over three months, six months, two year view, I think the dollar is likely to make, uh, make some headway. It's been a very weak currency for some years now and I think it's turning around. All right. Um, we've got um, a lot of UK data out this week. Uh, I believe we've got inflation numbers, we've got labour data out this week as well. Um, and th then, of course, this is in the context of the referendum in Scotland. What are your expectations for sterling up until Friday and then after that? Well, I think the referendum is going to take the precedence, so therefore any of the opinion polls, and there's a couple out on the 17th, just a, a day before the, the, the polls, and I think that will really be uh, very instructive in, in showing us where in, in, or how investors are, go, are going to position themselves into the vote. But we can't dismiss the importance of this data. This, as you say, uh, Labour data, CPI data, and also those minutes for the uh, September uh, Bank of England meeting. Now, it's my view that the market's been a little bit uh, uh, getting ahead of itself and pricing in that first Bank of England rate hike. Uh, and I think we have polls, a Reuters poll has shown that uh, uh, the, the, mi the minority voters who were quite significant in numbers that were anticipating a, a vote this year, they have begun to diminish. I think mm -hmm. the market is slowly beginning to, to push back those expectations for that first hike. And I think that this would have continued or happened irrespective of that Scottish vote because of the very slow growth in, in the Eurozone. So uh, these data, I think, can help clarify that picture of of what the backdrop of the UK economy is irrespective of that vote. And I think that even if there is a no vote, I think the Bank of England may delay perhaps until May, maybe mm -hmm. beyond on that first hike, which is instrumental for sterling.